Hola guys, so I'm recording this part of the video from Spain. I'm here with my mom, my brother Jacob and Oscar, so we're having a nice family trip. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you all about the new Istanbul airport and the Turkish Airlines economy class experience when taking the airport into consideration. Firstly though, I wanna tell my Swedish homies to watch to the end of the video or just watch the end of the video, whatever you want, because there's a super limited time offer for everyone in Sweden with increased signup bonuses for the credit cards that I usually recommend. But more details on that in the end. Istanbul airport is a huge complex. It's one of the biggest airports in the world. So let me start by saying that the terminal is stunning. It is so, so bright and just beautifully done. The consequence of the huge airport is a lot of walking though. I mean a lot. I had to walk for 20 minutes from my arrival gate to the baggage claim. Then I had to walk for 10 minutes from the lower floor to get to my check-in and then once I was through security and immigration, I had to walk another 20 minutes to get to my gate and all of this despite electronic or powered walkways. For a new airport, I was also surprised they didn't have facilities that are becoming more and more common at the world's top airports. For example, as an economy class passenger, something I really value is airports that have shower facilities that you can use. Unfortunately, Istanbul Airport doesn't have that and I don't know why they didn't decide to make them in this brand new facility. Your only option for showering is buying access to a lounge, but there's only one lounge you can buy access to at the airport and that costs 60 euros. So for me personally, yes, I wanted to shower after a long overnight, long haul flight, but I decided it wasn't quite worth 60 euros. At least there were lavatories all over the airport, so I chose to go freshen up a little bit there instead, but the lavatories didn't quite look like you'd expect them to look in an airport that opened six months ago. Also, the airport does have free Wi-Fi, which is good, but you're limited to one hour. I tried to work around it using different email addresses and logins, but it was quite a smart system and there was no way around. So literally, you have one hour and that's it. If you have an eight, nine hour layover, that's still one hour of free Wi-Fi. I'm honestly surprised again they'd limit Wi-Fi use so heavily in a brand new airport when Wi-Fi is really becoming an expectation for many passengers. But continuing on, it wasn't until after I had walked 20 minutes to get to my gate that I realized that all the places to eat are right at the center of the terminal. It goes out in arms like this on both sides. So I was in one of the arms and it turns out there was only one cafe in that entire arm that served food. And the problem was, the place didn't even take credit cards, which is also surprising in an international airport because you'd expect that people are using a lot of different currencies and stuff. At least they did accept a lot of currencies in cash. And also on a positive note, there were charging ports spread all around the airport, so it wouldn't be too hard to find somewhere to charge your electronic devices. And I really liked that there was greenery speckled across the terminal in some places, so it added a bit of life to the facility. What's up travelers from Istanbul's new airport. Now, this is gonna be a review of Turkish Airlines economy class. It's my first time ever flying their economy. The flight is completely full. It's May 321. I don't really know what to expect. So the onboard experience needs to be truly remarkable for me to recommend Turkish Airlines economy after this because given this airport, I don't recommend it as it stands. So I'm very curious, as I said, to see what the flight is like. So come with me guys. So the one benefit of transferring in Istanbul is that I could get Turkish delight. I got two assorted fruits and one pistachio flavor. One assorted fruit is for my mom and then we're taking a trip. So I was in Hong Kong for five days with my brother and now this is my trip to Berlin to meet Oscar where I'm gonna spend a few days. So Berlin is the final destination even though I flew from Hong Kong to Berlin via Bangkok, Singapore and Istanbul. So this is the last leg of this trip from my trip with my brother in Hong Kong to meeting Oscar and some friends in Berlin. And then just a few days after that, I'm gonna take a trip with my mom and my brother and Oscar to Portugal and Spain. So I'm super excited about that because my mom just got a new job. Congrats to her. She starts in about three weeks. So we're gonna take a nice two week trip before so she can enjoy the time off before she goes back to work. So come with me. <laughs>
Guys, welcome on board Turkish Airlines A39 A321 economy. We have headphones here waiting at the seat. And here is the leg room. Wow, <laughs> this is inconvenient. Luckily it's a shortish flight. Okay guys, the seats are really more like long haul seats than something you'd find on a short haul flight, especially in Europe. We have a remote down here which pops out. Then I really like when they do this, they have the, um, yeah, the tray table and they put all the inside literature up here which gives us a bit more leg room because you can see how much space these magazines would have taken. Oh, here's the beautiful boarding music. USB charging as well and the screen. So that was my review. What are my concluding thoughts? Turkish Airlines has the best economy class in Europe and yes, it's better than Aegean because Turkish has adjustable headrests. They have true long haul economy seats with entertainment systems. But the problem is that Turkish Airlines isn't really a European airline if you think about what their market is. You're usually not gonna fly Turkish to go from London to Rome, even from Moscow to Barcelona, Turkish isn't the most logical choice. So who are they actually competing with? The Middle Eastern carriers, and then it becomes a completely different game. In that regard, their economy class is about on par or a little bit better than what you'd find on Etihad, but certainly I would choose the Emirates A380 over that any day if I was going to India or further east. You also wanna consider the hub airport you are transiting in. Now, I'm not a huge fan of Dubai, I certainly like Muscat and Doha more, and both of those would be my choices over the new Istanbul airport, unfortunately. Nonetheless, this was a really impressive short flight. Getting such a nice meal, having a great entertainment system, really friendly service, just so many pluses, which makes me absolutely say I would fly Turkish Airlines economy again, but preferably it would be if Turkey was my origin or destination and I could avoid the transit experience. So unless you are one of my Swedish homies, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see you all in the next one. So fly safe. But I'm thinking, should I continue this video in Swedish? I've never spoken Swedish on my channel before, but it is my second mother tongue, so here we go. Okay, so hey. <laughs> oh god, this is a weird speaking Swedish. So I'm going to talk to you on American Express, on my channel. 
Och just nu så erbjuder de faktiskt 25% extra i välkomstbonus på alla deras kort. Oh my god, okej. Okay. Okay, actually, I decided I'm not gonna do this in Swedish because I just can't sit. It feels so unnatural for me. So anyway, I'm gonna say the same thing in English. Basically, American Express is giving 25% extra in sign-up bonuses on all their cards, which is amazing. It only happens twice per year, so this is your chance unless you want to wait for another six months. Just to give an example, I referred my aunt to the SAS Amex Premium card about a year and a half ago that she'd earned just through everyday spend for two tickets round trip to Bali. She paid a total of 1500 crowns, 1500 Swedish krona per person, and that was all. These tickets would have cost at least 8000 krona per person, so she saved at least 15000 crowns just through this credit card, but she also redeemed on Singapore Airlines and those tickets were like 12000 krona per person, so she ended up getting almost 24000 krona in value. And there really is no reason to not have a credit card and be collecting points on all your purchases that you're making every day with cards anyway. If you want to compare the different cards in Sweden, I have a blog post below. If you spend less than 150,000 crowns a year, I recommend the Amex Gold card because it comes with a 120 5,000 point sign-up bonus, which is equivalent to about 12,500 airline miles, but you get a bunch of free lounge visits and stuff with the cards, so it's a really valuable card. I have that one, but if you spend over 150,000 crowns a year, I recommend the SAS Premium card. I also have that one because after you've spent 150,000, you get a two-for-one voucher, so your points can be used. You pay this for one passenger, but you get two tickets, so you get one for free, basically. That card has a 15,000 point sign-up bonus, which will get you well on your way. And if you spend over 300,000 crowns a year for you big spenders, I recommend the SAS Elite card because you can get two of these vouchers per year. So two, two for one vouchers, plus you get immediate SAS Silver status and you'll have it permanently as long as you have the card. If you use my referral link below, you'll help support the channel and if you send me a link or a screenshot to show that you signed up using my link, I will also respond with a link to book a free one-on-one -on -one consultation with me to help you with your strategy going forward. This consultation is worth over 2,000 crowns, so the first 20 people who sign up with a link will get a free consultation as well once you email me proof that you've done it. So I hope this helps you guys. Tack för idag. That's all the Swedish I'm going to speak, but fly safe. <laughs>